solving it and problem solving. So any questions before we tackle those two last questions? All right. The speed of a gas is directly related to the temperature and the molar mass. The speed of a gas, a result of the temperature and molar mass. So, 21, page 21. All right, a chemist by the name of Graham, but we don't have to know this. We don't have to know that it's called Graham's equation. But what he found is the rate of effusion, rate of effusion. And remember, effusion is the state of a gas out of a small hole in its container. And that's, of course, while the pressure or the concentration of that gas is greater on the inside than the outside. Once they're the same concentration and conditions, then we don't have more leaving than coming in. Okay. So rate of effusion. What kind of units would we expect on, on that? So let's say laughing gas. Laughing gas and 205. My husband responds to laughing gas as the majority of the population. I, however, do not, and my children do not. I have no idea that I'm doing this. Anybody have an adverse, if you had your wisdom teeth out, did you get nice and joyful and chill? Nope. We sob like the world is coming to an end. I'm always so embarrassed. And when they tell me I'm gonna get laughing out, so I'm like, I'm so sorry. I, I I don't know. And then my husband tells me later, like, you're a complete mess. So I remember my husband telling me that. And then when my son had to some teeth out, he responded the same way. And they kept saying, like, he's good to go home. I'm like, no, there's obviously something wrong. Because he was sobbing, 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 and like, <laughs> wouldn't you know? Gerhardt's respond the opposite to laughing gas. But anyway, anybody else? And you don't even realize that. Do, do you remember? A little, I remember like leaving the office. Like I don't remember like staying. Yeah, and it depends on on. And of course, there's that like, is this real life? That little kid. Yeah. Remember that video where he had mouth surgery? This little kid. This video went viral. I think he was actually like in a car seat, and his parents videoed him. Anyway, yeah. He's like, is this real life? I forget what else he said. It was just precious. I hope that all of you respond in a giddy way. All right, N205. So, oh, no, that's what they have in the, uh, you know, oral surgeon's room or whatever else, uh, you know, in his room, in his uh, surgical center. So, you know, they'll have a, a gas cylinder filled with this. Well. There's going to be a valve that releases and how much you open the valve controls the rate, of course. So what would we be measuring rate? So every time that you've ever dealt with rate in other classes, what are the units? Whenever we're talking about rate, how fast? Yeah. And how do we measure how fast, well, like in the case of velocity, what distance is traveled per unit of time? What distance is traveled by, by, per unit of time? So if we're talking about like the rate of escape, okay, that's effusion, right? Would it be meter per second? Because we're trying to say like, how much, not how fast is it, but how much? So are you giving, you know, Reagan enough to go ahead and induce a, a you know, relaxed state that she won't remember or not enough? So amount, how do we measure the amount of a gas? Yeah. So what unit? Depending upon what you need, 
It could be leader. It could be middle leader. Gosh, it could be giga leader, micro leader. All depends on the situation per unit of time. So Jacob, choose a unit of time. Sure. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about. And root mean square velocity, right, is 3RT over molar mass. So usually what we're doing is comparing two gases. That's usually the application. So look, speed is inversely related to molar mass. So what we get is the rate of effusion of, we'll just call it gas one. Well, that is going to be, right, inversely related to the square root of the molar mass of gas one. So the easiest comparison to be able to find this is to know the rate of effusion of another gas under the same conditions. And if we just know their molar masses, we are good to go. So do you see, we just need to be sure that we're putting two where two needs to go and then one where one needs to go. Okay. Let's go to example one. Calculate the ratio of the effusion rates. Oh, well, that's just this. That's out of the equation. So the rate of hmm, hydrogen and uranium hexafluoride. So Olivia, what do you want to call gas one and gas two? You could totally choose. Sure. Okay, and that will then be screw of the molar mass of uranium hexa oh, hexafluoride over the square root of the molar mass of H2. Now, because it's, you know, molar mass divided by molar mass, we just need them to be the same unit so we can keep them in gram per mole. That's more than fine. And we could do right the molar mass of I, of course, pull up the link and I will pass it right. So, of course, we take the square root of the top, square root of the bottom, and then divide them, or just go ahead and divide, right? And then square root of both of those. Um, so we get 13.2. What does that mean? That hydrogen effuses 13.2 times faster than UF6. Now, what if Olivia would have chosen UF6 to be gas one? Well, then we would have found the inverse, which would have been 0 0.0758, which we would say then the rate of uranium hexafluoride is 0 0.1 compared to, or 0 0.1 slower than hydrogen. So either, so that's why you can choose whichever perspective. No, yes, yeah. yes, 
Yes, you could say that. 13.2 times slower or hydrogen is 13.2 times faster. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah, that's that's what I think the clearest. I see Gabby noticing. Look at that dark sky coming. Oh, I didn't know if that's what you're observing. Sorry, I saw. Oh, are we expecting a thunderstorm? Okay. Yeah, that was a nice gentle, well, at least in Buffalo Park, it was a nice gentle rain. Really? Okay, so then, you know, yeah, it was, sorry, nice and gentle. So maybe Buffalo's going to get it now. All right, so one other thing. Okay, what we call the Van der Waals equation, but you don't have to know that that's what it is. And the deal is with the Van der Waals equation, um, very, very rarely will you have to solve. We do uh, have a uh, question in the unit assignment where you have to solve for a variable. But usually, we are just asked, how does this match more a real gas than this? So remember, PV equals NRT only really applies to ideal gases, pretend gases, or gases at very high temperature, very low pressure. So if you see, we add something to pressure, but we subtract away something from volume, but moles R and T are good. These variations allow for more real uh, numerical values in lab. So these will get us close. If we solve for pressure, gets us close. Solve for volume, gets us close. But if we modify per this addition and this addition, we get that much closer. So what Van der Waal did was said, yeah, that's an excellent equation, but if anything, get it to match real gases a little more. This unit, we just have to say, why do we add this and why do we subtract this? Otherwise, we are good to apply this all the time, all the time, all the time. Okay. I am sure that we've all... Thank you very much. Can I the end of the Okay. All right. It's so it's one of the one of the So if you want to go to the but I'd rather you go to the And if you rub it soft, We've all seen the spectrum, well, have we not? Of Robert coming to find us. Robert, all his friends and friends, lying up starting at seven o'clock, so they know that they walk down that hallway to make kind of things. They line up like for just a few minutes. To see us, oh, maybe they can get close. Oh my gosh, maybe they could like reach out and touch you. <laughs> Yeah. So by the time Robert walks all the way down the hallway, oh my gosh, they're like trying to, you know, hold you back and I'm, oh my gosh. So when you actually like come in the room, you're not entering as Dylan. Because Dylan gets here way before the time. So he circumvents all that. We say the gas particles don't attract each other, but they do. They do. 
They, they attract, even though gases have such high kinetic energy, they're sticky. So, Robert, without the freshman, he's just coming in, and then he's going to collide with his seat and his desk, exert a certain amount of force in his area. But, those cannons, pull me back. You're not going to collide with as much force in his area. So, the pressure that we measure, just like when Robert gets here, he's not really free Robert. He's the holding back of the other gas particles attraction. So, this pressure is the pressure that's measured, but it's less than what it really should be. Okay, so the pressure that's measured is less than the actual because of particle attraction. The particle attraction, you know, uh, holds the uh, gas particles together, decreasing um, their forcefulness of collisions or collision forcefulness. And so we just have to add, and you do have, yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. So we're adding that N moles. So how much is there? So how many young ladies are holding Robert back? The more that's there, Oh, then the, the less this is going to measure, right? So, and then, of course, like, what volume are they in? So if they're in, like, this little hallway, whoa, that's going to, you know, versus a bigger area. Um, these A and Bs are based upon the material, and you'll be given those values. So if it's helium gas or if it's nitrogen gas, you just apply the right one if you'd be asked to solve but we definitely just have to usually explain. Good? Okay. What else do we say about ideal gases? They have no particle volume. No particle volume. This is the volume of the container. Isn't that what we say the volume of a gas is? The volume of the container. But that's really not the volume of the gas. So this corrects the volume of the container to be the volume of the gas by removing the volume of the gas particles. Okay, so if we're saying the volume of the container is two liters, then we're taking the two liters and saying, oh, but we have how many particles? And then B talks, it references like how big they are. And so we're subtracting away, you know, how many and kind of their volume, if you will, to be really the volume of the gas. Oh, sorry. So he said that there were two um, things that, you know, were the, like the big leaps of faith with the kinetic molecular theory of gases that are a little hard to accept. So Van der Waals just said, like, can I correct for those then? So this is correcting for the ignoring of the particle attraction, and this is correcting for the uh, ignoring particle volume. Okay, that's it. That's our chapter. All right, so, hmm. I don't know, are we feeling competitive? Huh? All right. Okay, this side of the room, I definitely heard that feeling competitive. You guys brought home the titration championship. 
So repeat. Okay. So I decided to letter the end of the packet questions. Robert, thank you for letting me letting me use you as an example. I don't know, have you ever seen, I don't know. And that's okay. Like there are definitely people to be fans of, you know, but uh, that you line up at the hotel for the, those are usually like boy band things, right? Or I don't know, man, I sure do <laughs> definitely geek out when I see like my AP chemistry, like people that I'm such a fan of. But anyway, so yeah, but I, I don't think, well, I don't know. Who knows? All right. Anyway, so page A. We are given these five balloons. Now, when it says they are identical, they're filled to the same volume at 25 and one atmospheres. So they mean identical conditions. So each of these is one liter, let's say, at room temperature and then room pressure. We are asked to answer these. So I think our competition will be. First, who or what team do we want to work in? You can fly solo, partner, your lab teams. Um, who has the strongest answer for each would that make sense strongest for each so it'll be four prizes sounds good okay go we don't need complete sentences but when it says explain you need words explain you need words explain explain we need words go You're very welcome. You're a really good guy. 